This video is brought to you by Rage. I'm just kidding. It's brought to you by Manscaped. Stick around to hear more about the discount that they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. Okay, today is going to be the third video in a series of previous videos about Raid Shadow Legends. Episode 1 was Raid Garbage Legends, also the most popular video I believe I have ever made in the channel's entire history. Episode 2 was Raid Casino Legends, which is a great watch and I'll link it down below. And now Episode 3, Raid Stolen Legends. As a precursor before the actual story here, this concept revolves around artwork that appears to have been taken, without credit I might add, from an independent artist, and that artist is also the creator of the thumbnail for this very video, with his portfolio and social media links down below. He does excellent work, he is open for commissions right now, and I highly recommend checking out his content, again links are down below in the description. So what's the story? Simply put, Raid Shadow Legends, owned and operated by Plarium Games, appears to have taken a champion concept submission from a promotional event without acknowledging the origins of that material, without awarding the listed prize pool to the artist, and while claiming that they themselves created the champion back in January of 2019, only to ignore the artist responsible after agreeing to a voice call with him, making the entire situation both suspect and rather bizarre. It all starts with a community competition. December 9th of 2020, Plarium Games takes to Facebook and posts a thread about their open submission community champion design contest. The rules of this contest are fairly simple, and the rewards are, for the most part, a selection of in-game currency and items. The competition would run from December to January of 2021, December 2020 to January 2021 that is, and at the very bottom is a disclaimer which reads as follows. By taking part in the contest, you agree that any data, text, information, files, graphics, photographs, along with their selection and arrangement, uploaded, posted to, emailed, transmitted, or otherwise made available through the contest, are subject, whether in whole or in part, to unlimited commercial, non-commercial, and or promotional use by Plarium as per Article 13 of the Terms of Use." End quote. Now, it's actually up for debate whether or not the Terms of Use or Terms of Service for Plarium Games represents an actual legally binding contract, and thus whether or not this paragraph is even legally enforceable. That seems to vary on a case-by-case -case basis rather drastically, but even if we assume that this would be legally binding and fully airtight, the entire situation, top to bottom, would still become a series of what appear to be false statements and manipulations in the pursuit of using an artistic concept without acknowledging or crediting ever the source. And in my opinion, that's worth making a video on. Sponsor time. Manscaped? Trusted. Products? Great. Quality? Awesome. Branding? Funny. Skin safe? Yes. Manscaped is the most trusted men's grooming brand on the entire market. It's got clean, professional products, and they support a large number of YouTubers, so that's just an added bonus on top. They offer a wide range of products, but most prominently, the Lawnmower 4.0. Skin safe technology, reduced nicks and cuts, and if you click the link down below and enter code UPPER right now, you can get 20% off your entire order with free shipping for a limited time. Again, a huge selection, and actively growing, of high-quality men's grooming supplies with a link down below in the description for 20% off and free shipping when you use code UPPER. Ever since I first partnered up, I have seen them consistently elevate their product line and quality, making this a partnership I am very proud to have. Big thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring the channel. So what happened? Well, after the design contest kicked off, a large number of artists began to submit their champions, and among them was an artist who had conceptualized a Lizardman Sacrificial Warrior. This lizard man could be summarized as a winged, spear-wielding, support-slash-attack champion named Kazal Khan, and the submission was so in-depth it even came with an ability kit and various lore explanations on top of that. Upon the conclusion of the contest, which was January 8th, I believe, three finalists were chosen, and the community then voted on the winner. The winning design was a Black Knight, I think, not our Lizard Man, but that's just where it begins. Later, on January 18th, there is a larger Artist's Choice post about the competition that goes live on the Plarium Facebook page, and included among those submissions was Kazal Khan. This establishes one very key thing here. The design was seen and liked, if you will, by the team at Plarium Games. Fast forward to early May and Plarium Games fires off a Discord post for patch 4.20 containing a new champion named Ramantu Drakesblood, but what they don't say is anything at all about Kazal Khan. Ramantu Drakesblood is not some random new champion in the randomized pool, he is an exclusive reward for completing a series of highly difficult challenges and missions, which, as of yet, if I am actually properly informed, no one has been able to complete. This means that he is an extremely sought-after commodity that can only be acquired through a very heavy time investment, and that makes him valuable to Plarium. Extremely so, if we understand that the game is heavily predicated on microtransaction spending. Now, that would be fine if Ramantu Drakesblood wasn't effectively a carbon copy of Kazal Khan, and to underline exactly how similar these two champions actually are, we can look at a number of different features. One, bipedal lizard man with wings. This is not an archetype that existed in Raid before that point as far as I can tell. Two, frilled neckline surrounding raptor features. Three, dagger-tipped spear as a weapon. 
Four, tail and spike pattern, completely. Five, wing design with prominent mid-level spikes. And six, a loincloth portion of the armor. These two designs are undeniably extremely similar, and taking notice of this fact, the artists behind the submission decided to reach out to the Plarium moderators on Discord. What followed was an extended exchange where the lead moderator in the community, acknowledging that the designs were, and I quote here, pretty damn close, I'll message the community managers, pushed his inquiry up the chain, which then resulted in a claim by said community managers that they would contact the artist for a conversation. That never actually happened. Instead, after days of zero communication, the artist reached out again via the same email that he had used for the design submission in the first place and managed to receive a response. Here's what it said. Hi, we are out of the office till Tuesday due to national holidays, but I'll try to give you as much details as I have. The Ramontu concept was created and approved on January 2019, a year before the Community Champion contest was announced. Since our production pipeline for new features and champions requires a lot of time, some of the new content is released in the game with a delay. Dragon-ish Ramontu was on a bench waiting for their balance. We won't use your concept without letting you know, agreeing on the terms and conditions. That's a huge legal and reputation damage company with, this is almost gibberish, the, the grammar's really horrible. That's a huge legal and reputation damage company would take after acting with violence violating intellectual property rights. Certainly I'll double check dates of Romantu's creation once our art department will be back in the office. Let me come back to you with more information early next week. Stay safe and have a lovely weekend. That was a perfectly adequate response, but also contained some very key details. One, we won't use your concept without letting you know, agreeing on the terms of service. Two, huge reputation damage to the company for violating intellectual property rights, as per their own words. And three, the concept was created in January of 2019, and also, as per that email, there was a follow-up which contained more information. Quote, Hi, I double-checked the information, double-checked the information. The very first draft concept was made on 4th of January 2019. There were six types of coloring, but we decided to move on with a blue option. And the final concept was approved on the 10th of May 2019. The 3D model of the character was created later on the 13th of September. From the very beginning, Romantu was a powerful dragonish champion. Please let me know if you need any additional information from my side, or if you'd like to set up a call. The follow-up doubled down on this being a concept from January 2019, it also sort of fixated on the coloring, and additionally extended a formal offer to have a call if he would like additional information. And that is an offer he decided to accept, stating quite plainly, Hi, yes, I think we should set up a call. What times could work for you? I'm CET Stockholm. This email actually went unanswered, and when he followed up again after that, Plarium finally responded by saying, quote, Hi, could you please write down questions that you have or let me know what other information you would like to get for me just to know how to make our communication more insightful and useful, end quote. Since the artist was only doing this to understand further what had happened or perhaps not happened and how everything had ended up this way, he did not have a list of specific questions at that time, merely wanted to understand in a more long form, open-ended forum what the process and timeline had actually looked like. But upon stating that to them in email form, he was completely ignored. He sent a follow-up after that again, but ultimately that's how it ended. Numerous times where Plarium had ceased communicating with him, their own statement that they wanted to avoid reputational damage, their offer for a formal conference call or of some kind, but then nothing. Silence. Here's the part where some people will begin to speculate and say, well, the designs aren't exactly the same, which is true. There are certain discrepancies in the bone structure, for example, such as a split jaw mandible for one. But when analyzing the situation, there is a layer that we haven't yet touched on. Kazal Khan, the original artistic concept for the competition, was a support slash attack champion, and Ramantu Drake's blood, Dark's blood, whatever, is exclusively attack based. The ability kit for these champions, however, well, let, let me just read some things off here. Kazal Khan, in his ability kit submission, has his best ability listed as a strong flying attack, where he attacks all enemies with a portion that removes buffs, then a multi target chance to apply debuffs. Right, it's two sections of the attack. Ramantu Drake's Blood, Plarium's totally original idea from January 2019 that has multiple nearly identical visual similarities and replications when compared to Kazal Khan, has an ability called Blood Wings, which is depicted in the ability thumbnail as an attack where Ramantu is actually flying that attacks all enemies and also has a chance to remove buffs on his targets. That's pretty similar, but we're not done. The passive ability for Kazal Khan, again, the champion not designed by Plarium Games, is called Ceremonial Leader and will increase the speed of the champion by a percentage for each buff on the champion when attacked. 
On the other side, Ramontu Darks Drake's Blood, whatever, has a passive ability called Arrogance, which is, oddly enough, a personality trait specifically outlined by the artist in the initial lore packet, where, among a couple other bonuses, whenever an enemy character places a debuff on him, he gets his speed boosted. I hope you see where I'm going with this right now. Not only is this champion extremely similar from a visual perspective, in a lot of separate ways, to a submission that was chosen as an artist's choice by the dev team, it is also similar from a mechanical perspective at the exact same time, even containing precisely similar buff types and stats, at least in terms of archetype format. The only thing removed are the support functions, while all the fundamental attack mechanics are preserved. Considering all the different layers here, I find it completely impossible to believe that this design was created full scale in 2019 as they claim. I find it completely impossible to believe that this was not crafted or at least heavily modified to be a copy after the design competition. And even if I'm correct, I see no other explanation by the way, it wouldn't even matter if they had just said, yup, we copied it, you gave us the rights while participating in the contest, so here it is. Instead though, they said, we don't want reputational damage, we don't want to violate intellectual property rights, this isn't your design, this was crafted separately in a vacuum during January of 2019, it just has multi-layered and specific correlations all over the place at every level to the design submission that you made, let's have a call to explain all of this, and then they went dark. It's no secret that I dislike the product that is Raid Shadow Legends. I've been offered tens of thousands of dollars at this point through marketing agencies to shill for their service, and I don't, because I simply don't like their business practices. And when I see things like this in context, it really makes me wonder. How many designs come from sources who aren't given full credit? How many times has stuff like this happened? How many of the artists ever even find out about it? And why would they respond in that email chain the way that they did? Why did all of that happen? Speculating here, and I want to be crystal clear, it is exactly that, speculation right now. Is it the case that they responded under the impression that their theft of intellectual property might in fact be punishable, only to then seek consultation from their legal department or whatever outside agency, and ditch the communications once they knew that their terms were actually enforceable and they had every legal right to do this? I'm not sure if that's even the case, but is it possible? I think it is possible. But just because something is probably technically legal, doesn't make it right. Artists work very hard, especially in competitions, especially people that are trying to break out and get more notoriety. And in this particular case, the artist was rather enthusiastic about the contest. He had once played the game. He enjoyed the existing champion styles and he very much wanted to participate to the best of his ability, only to see his champion or something undeniably derivative of his champion in my eyes, get created and elevated to one of the most desirable positions possible in the entire game with no credit none of the advertised rewards, and adding insult to injury, he was ignored and neglected during the communication process multiple times as he tried to figure out what was actually going on. That's not right. In the end, I think that Plarium Games could easily have dealt with this much, much better. I do not believe for a single fraction of a second that this champion was fully conceived in 2019, as they claim, and I hope that this will push them towards better communication at the very least, and practices for any future competitions, or warn artists that their work might very well be used in a similar way if they decide to participate. Again, links down below. You can support an independent artist who does excellent work. You can buy Manscaped products and become a hygiene god. You can follow the channel on Odyssey and transcend reality as a genius non-YouTube viewer. You can buy the merch and be the pinnacle of fashionistic icon in America. Or you can follow my other social media and be subjected to just really horribly toxic behavior. That's it. Thank you all for watching and have a nice night.